The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host, a jelly donut, David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you. And I care. Barry Stein. I'm going to use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, May 4th, 2019. May the force be with you all. There is patina in my cigar, and I love it. He's a young man with a plan to build a new cigar brand for the long term. Mo Molly from Patina Cigars is going to join us to talk about his adventure so far in the cigar industry. And later, the biggest cigar company in the world is for sale. Why and who is going to buy them? We'll talk about that and lots more. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 10th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. <laughs> Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Mo, great to have you with us. Thanks great. for coming. Thank you for having me. Excited uh, to be here. Uh, we want to... Uh, uh, get into your story, but the first thing I'd like to do is light this up so we can uh, smoke a cigar while we do it. So the first cigar we're smoking is a patina, of course. Barry, tell us about this. Well, today's first cigar, as you mentioned, is the patina Habano, and it's manufactured in Nicaragua, a Casa Favelli for patina cigars. We're smoking the 6x46 Capa, which is a Corona, and it's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper over Nicaraguan binder with fillers from Nicaragua and Pennsylvania. I get it, because copper is notorious for its patina. So smart. Thanks. Single, a single cigar will set you back $9.99, while a box of 16 is $143.99, which is a savings of almost $16 or 10% off at the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Well, it does look beautiful with that copper on it yes, and the it outside does. wrapper on it. Beautiful looking, seamless. Let's give it a cut and light, see what it's all about. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal last chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. All right, Mo, I don't know how you are of smoking cigars if you... Uh, pre-taste a cigar before you light the cigar and you get into these crazy flavors that we do, but it's either good or bad? You know, for me, it's typically either good or bad. I will always cold draw a cigar if it's the first time I'm smoking it. Other right. than that, yeah, I just go right into it. You guys ever had portobello mushrooms, like a really good portobello they mushroom? almost meat. Grilled. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting a little on this, on the cold draw. With or without the stuff. If you're grilling a portobello mushroom and you have the stem on it, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Yeah. I you. wouldn't know. I don't eat vegetables. I work with one, but I don't. <laughs> We're going to light our cigar today <laughs> with the Vertigo Attaché. The Vertigo Attaché features a single jet, an easy adjustment wheel, and the patented Vertigo Big Ass Tank, all for the low price of $9.99. That is the Vertigo Attaché. How much did you say? $9.99. Wow. Same price as the cigar we're smoking. So it is a perfect pairing right there. And it's a single jet, and we're smoking a thinner ring gauge. What you say, 46, Barry? Yes, sir. So it's right up Ed Sullivan's wheelhouse I'm here. loving it. And loving it. Okay, so let's get to it. Mo, yes, you're sir. a young man. How old are you? I'm 36 years old. 36. Welcome to the cigar industry. How many years are you in this now? Uh, in the industry as a whole? Yeah. Uh, see, 20... About four years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So started out podcasting. Uh, really? Reviewing cigars. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Oh. Yep. That, uh, so we, so I'd started a, so I moved down to Oakland. So I'm originally from Chicago. Let's just backtrack. Okay. Originally from Chicago. Uh, I work in the grain industry. 
I moved down to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Um, and I meet a buddy of mine, Drew. So we were both really into cigars. I end up moving back to Illinois, and uh, we wanted a way to stay in touch. So we said, hey, man, why don't we start reviewing cigars or whatever? So we started doing that, and, um, you know, we started to gain a little bit of traction, started getting people sending us cigars to review. And Nice. Uh, and what then was it called? Sultans of Smoke. All right. So uh, I still do the podcast. No uh, kidding. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then uh, still do that. Uh, the review, I don't review cigars anymore, obviously. Uh, Bias. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah you don't want to become a, like a jerk. Um, but it's it, it's great because you must have smoked all kinds of different stuff over the over that period. Oh yeah. So mm. you know what you like for sure, or what's good and what's bad for sure. Yeah, and it's amazing how much. Uh, and this is what I always tell people uh, that are either just getting into cigars or even have been smoking cigars. You know, just always challenge your palate, right? So like, what I would smoke four years ago is not necessarily what I would smoke today or enjoy. And then sometimes I'll go back to stuff that I used to like, and I'll like it, or I might not like yeah, it. And it's, uh, it's an incredible journey in that regard. And it's, you know, if you look at the cigar experience as more than just smoking a cigar, you're talking about an enjoyment, right? Enjoying a cigar. Uh, it is fan- fantastic, the opportunities you have just to be able to go back and try all this different stuff yeah. all the time. So. Wow, so interesting, your buddy of yours, and you say, okay, you're going away, so let's mm. be friends with each other and have a cigar, basically, with each other and, mm-hmm. and, and put this out there, and you liked it so much that you said, okay, now, I, I know there's a lot of people geeking out about cigars that listen to our show that say, how do you go from that step yeah. and then say, okay, I'm going to actually make a brand, create yeah. it, go out there on the road, and bring this thing well, to life. Well, you have to be a little, like, clinically it's, insane. Right? Yeah, to, dude, it was probably... To, the, it's probably the stupidest thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for, if like you're looking at it from the outside, you're like, okay, this guy's got a career. You went to school all these years for this, you know, degree, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go into the cigar industry. Yeah. And um. And and try this right in in a what was becoming more and more uh, a heavily regulated industry. Mm. And so you're really just uh, kind of staring fate in the face, and you're like, I feel <laughs> there's just something about you that I like, and right? I just I kind of <laughs> want to see what happens with us, and yeah. let's give this a shot. And so we for our podcast, we actually came out with a cigar um, for the podcast made by uh, James Brown of sure. Oveja Negra Black Label. Yeah. And so he had just bought that factory, and we approached him. We said, hey, man, would you do a cigar for the podcast? And uh, he did. And so we put that out, and that was 2016, uh, 2015, 2016. And then, uh, man, the love for it just grew from there. And uh, we were talking a little bit about Nelson Alfonso before the yeah. show, who does Atabe Byron. Yeah. Um, Oliver, who is one of my close buddies, uh, reps them on the road. And, and Nelson's one of the nicest guys I've met in the entire world, let alone just the industry, right? Sure. And so um, he, he looks at it as an art. And when I was talking to him, you could feel that love for the, the, the passion and the passion of tobacco. Not just like, okay, I want to put together a cigar. He's talking, you know, I told him the to blend and he's breaking it down. He goes, oh, this gives you this. And, You're right. and it was just such an amazing experience in that regard. And that's kind of how I look at cigars too, man. It's like you're a, you're a chef putting together a recipe that you hope right. not only that you like, but other people like as well. So how long of a process before you said, okay, this is the cigar? Mm-hmm. So the process in total was about two years. Okay. Yeah. So um, when, I left my, when I left my job, I went to manage a shop in Chicago to learn retail for about a year. Great, great, and that great was, move. Man, it was, the, the experience, uh, even though it was only a year, the, the experience was invaluable. And one of the things that, you know, we talk about building a long-term brand, you want to you have a sense of uh, being relatable to the people that you're trying to sell your cigar to, right? And so if I could... The more experiences I have in life, the more, the more people I'm relatable to, right? And yeah. so I've, I've done all this different stuff in my life up to this point, worked in different industries, lived in different places, and um, it helps you just uh, that much more on the road anyway, being able to talk to people and sell, you know, sell your, your brand. And essentially, you're, sell, you're selling yourself in a way. Sure. Right? Um, the cigar is a component of building the brand, but there's so much more that goes into so, it. So, and we're going to get into it on, on the next hour, talking about the, um, you know, a big company selling out. And mm-hmm. what ends up happening is, you know, these big uh, European companies that come into the United States into an industry of premium cigars, they believe that 
all widgets are widgets and a cigar is just a widget too. It doesn't matter, whatever. Right. And I am 34 years in this industry here to tell you that it is not. And I, I know everybody believes that it doesn't matter what the product is, but there's something truly unique to this product. And you can throw all the money in the world at it. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter because I've seen people do it. Mm -hmm. And it still doesn't work. It becomes a relationship business and it's personal and you have to actually love your product in order to make me love your product that's right. and that's as we track all these infectious. people yeah mm -hmm. as, yep. as, as we track all the success that happened there there's there's nobody i can think of that uh started a brand by just throwing a lot of money in and it actually took off when you get to know this person and see see what ended up doing it, it was the love of the product, the love right. of the industry, putting the, the more money. I'm sure you were making more money than you're making now because I know startup uh, companies. I was. Yeah. <laughs> Significantly. Right. How those ramen noodles taste? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they have restaurants based on those yes, now. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> and, and for somebody that's listening to say, let me start this up, I'm here to tell you that it's not going to be gold at the end of the rainbow very quickly it m the majority of it takes 10 years to, yeah. for a break even point. that's an overnight success yeah. in the cigar industry. it really years. is yeah. um but you did it you're happy you did it even though I i'm sure you're struggling still you're at struggling stages man it's uh i wouldn't give it up for the world yeah um this is to be able to go and and um uh, i've been lucky enough to have a good number of people that have really gotten behind my brand really good people um that are supportive and uh they keep me going. Maybe right. they don't know that, but yeah. they do. You know, um, anything from family, uh, my girl to my buddies. Yeah. Right. So um, it's all worth it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And so just bringing a smile to people's faces that enjoy the cigar, man, that's the best feeling. It's in the world. a great cigar. It's a cigar to be proud of. It's a, it's a cigar. Those that are listening to this, that if you're into mild cigars, you're going to have no problem with. If you want full body, I wouldn't say it's full body, but it's the, it's a little more than medium. I, I think everybody can enjoy this one that we're having right now, which is the Habano, but you also make a Connecticut version of this Yep, little milder. I smoked it earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if you're looking for a little bit milder, um, so, um, the, the plan begins of, okay, I'm going to uh, make a cigar. Now I have to figure out who is going to be the manufacturer of this. Right, right. So what kind of process is that? You know, just talking to people, um, figuring out kind of how... So understanding what kind of cigar you wanted to go for, right? And I knew that... And this is what I always tell people. If you, if you like patina, you like patina. If you don't like patina, you don't like patina. And that's a personal preference. And sure? I understand that. Not yeah. everyone's going to like your cigar. Um, but if, if somebody's able to go into a humidor and pick out three, four, five cigars just like a patina, I'm dead in the water. You know, I mean, I don't have the name recognition at this point to sure. be able to just have a cigar that's like everything else. So I was like, who could I work with that I can come up with something unique and um, maybe not be constrained by, um, how would I put it, like preconceived notions of what a cigar should be like, right? And so when I found Casa Favilli, which makes Mombacho, and, and uh, it was the first cigar that came out of that factory that wasn't a Nicaraguan Puro. All right. So we were, uh, it wasn't like I went down there, they had a bunch of blends on the shelf. I picked right, one, I threw right. a band on it. I mean, these things were from the ground up. And to be able to be involved, uh, to work with Claudio and, and the factory down there, to be able to be involved in that process was huge for me. So they end up having to get in some of the ingredients you asked for, maybe small amounts, just let's try it out yep. and see what it is. Yep. Uh, th there must have been some tobacco that you end up saying, no, it sounds like it would be good in here, but it's not. Oh, man. We, we tried this uh, Brazilian, uh, not Matafina, Mata Norte. Sure. And it was atrocious. I mean, I smoked that thing, man. I was just like, there's just, no, nah, there's zero chance of this happening. Because you want to try to be different sure. and be cool. And but it works on somebody thing. else's, but it's not going to work. Right, yeah. So, so the, people understand the combinations, the amount of combinations of different things. Mm -hmm. I've done it. That Let me put this together, this together. This. On paper, boy, this yeah. looks good. Completely awful. The guy will tell me as I'm saying this, yeah. no, that's not going to be good. And I go, yeah. no, because there's a little sweetness from this. And this is yeah. going to be, we got the sweet and salt here. That This is going to be good. Yeah. And then he gives it to me and he was a thousand percent right because yeah. this is what they do they, right. they know right and it's like wow boy on paper it looks like it's good it's terrible okay where yeah. do we go from here yeah absolutely absolutely a lot of middle priming tobaccos in this um in terms of the 
the the filler the actual yeah it's very, it's very just very aromatic it's mm-hmm. like a almost like smells like a root beer float kind of coming off the, the, inter- the interesting the thing foot. to me is the pennsylvania and i and yeah. i actually love pennsylvania but in a small amount yeah you can only put a little bit in there it has yeah. a very it, distinctive taste yeah. yeah and each size obviously is blended a little bit differently uh smokes a little bit differently um but every size except this one actually has pennsylvania lajero in it so this this cigar right here has zero lajero it's all seco viso so this factory is not where I typically go when I go um, to Nicaragua. Mm-hmm. Everybody goes to Esteli, mm-hmm. but this is not where Esteli and everybody, all the other people are. These guys are all by themselves. I don't know much about the factory, so uh, tell me about them, where they are. and uh. So they are in Granada, Nicaragua, um, which is more or less a big tourist town. My understanding of the history is it's the oldest town Colonial town. Okay. So it was the first town that the Spaniards... I mean, there are buildings from 15, oh. 1500s, right? So uh, it's fascinating from that perspective. You get a lot of actually non-American tourists. So you get uh, a lot of Canadian tourists, a lot of people from Europe that go down there. Yeah. Um, you'll run into the occasional American, but uh, not not as much. And uh, they took basically a mansion that was built in 1925 by an Italian architect, um, and turned it into a cigar factory. Wow. Which so. is what the, the staircase on the band is yep. kind of paying homage to, right? Yep, exactly. There's a big staircase yep. in, the, uh, mm-hmm. in the mansion. Is there tobacco grown in that area? No. No? So the tobacco is brought in from Estelia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's all there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why right. did you, why'd you go with the name Patina? So, man, to me, like, uh, you look at stuff that gets weathered and... Like I always use this, the example of the Statue of Liberty, right? So it's not nor it's not originally green. Right. It's you know it's been through a lot of stuff, and it's you know people come to the U.S. and they like let's just say back in the day you're coming in you see Ellis Island you see sure. the Statue of Liberty there's symbol of freedom there that that symbol of freedom is covered in patina, and I feel like if you translate that to all of us as human beings it's like we go through stuff. But underneath, you're still Barry, you're still Jonathan, you're still David. Well, still, last week I was Barry. <laughs> Were you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you identified as Barry last yeah, week? Just, just for one day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't I've, don't I've, go back to that at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in therapy for it. Yeah. yeah. I understand some things happened. I haven't gone back to watch the show, but right. just leave it at that. Yeah. And yeah, and I guess depending on who you're identifying as at that time. Um, but underneath, you are... I felt weathered, though. Did you feel weathered? I did. After that show, I was weathered. I felt like I had a solid patina. That's good, man. And then your experience as Barry uh, is something that you put back in, you know, you're you going forward. Sure. It's in the vault. Sure. Is it, how far away is it tucked? It's tucked in deep, buddy. Good. You're, you're, okay. Well, good. You're a bigger person now. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I lost two pounds. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so th- this is almost near Costa Rica. Where this mm-hmm, factory is, mm-hmm. it's down there, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is Nicaragua, but it's it's closer to Costa Rica than it is Esteli. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, not super far. I'd have to go see that sometime. Uh, and and that is Italian owned. The Mombacho or the yeah, factory? The factory. So the the architect of the factory or the mansion was a t- an Italian architect. Yep. Uh, the owners of Mombacho are actually Canadian. The master blender Claudio is Italian oh, okay. from Sicily. Or okay. from, uh, well, Italy, but his family's originally from Sicily. Oh, yep. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, you guys getting some flavor notes on this uh, cigar? See if we're... Uh... I'm getting a well-defined pistachio now. Mm. I'm getting uh, orange vanilla cream. And part of that is the... That's for Jonathan, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> part of it is the, the root beer aroma coming off mm. the foot. It's, it's I, causing... I, a... I got some cedar and some cinnamon... Um, you, uh, after you make these cigars, how long of an aging process do you put on these before you say, okay, they're ready to go? Um, the least is three months. I believe the ones you guys are smoking now are roughly a year and a half old. Wow. Okay. So I'm picking up cedar. So this has been sitting around, which is good. That's very good. The burn's very true. The draw is great. Packaging, simple. It's all about the cigar mm-hmm. that's in here. Sixteen count boxes too. You must move uh, a lot of boxes. That's a good. You, you, that's a good box count. You know, man. You try to. What what I saw during my short time in retail was the twenty twenty five counts were a little bit. Oh, not a little bit. A lot harder to move. Um, 
And so you want to come out with something. The 10 counts for a small brand become very uh, costly, right? So sure. it's hard to do a 10 count. Yeah, you got to divide so kind the of, cigars by the cost of the box. Yeah, exactly. And so I was like, man, a 10 count isn't really cost effective for my position right now. And so uh, I kind of tried to find something in the middle. That uh, and then there's like 16 steps on the ah. on the staircase when you go from. I'm, I'm big into that connecting so. some of the dots. It drives Jonathan crazy. Yeah, yeah. why are you doing this? Going on. Yeah, it's good. It's good because there's always an underlying reason, and maybe it comes out years later. But the six there's a picture of a staircase. There's 16 yeah. steps on it, and uh, now I have to go to the factory and count the 16 steps. <laughs> <laughs> He will. Beautiful. He yeah, will. he will. Yeah. It better be 16. Yeah. So you're going, you're going around. Plus or minus. You go around yourself to all the different stores and so see. I've been lucky enough to have a great network of uh, reps. Uh, one of them is with us today, Joe. Yep. Uh, Firehouse Cigar Brokers. Yep. If you see him, the mullet. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, and then I got guys in the Midwest, um, Michael Perales and his team, ah. uh, Impact Force. Um, and then Frank Bellavie on the West Coast and Miguel uh, Montanez in uh, New York, Jersey, Philly. Uh, those guys do a great job of, of trying to get the word out. Man, I know their job isn't easy. It's a small brand, right? Sure. And so it's um, it takes a lot of work and it's different. But every day is a step towards building that recognition that I feel like uh, you need to build a brand. So yeah. uh, it's not just about creating a cigar, putting out a cigar. There has to be something around your brand that people gravitate to. And so um, that's kind of what I'm trying to build, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. A, it, it, it's a long road ahead. Oh, man. Long road me. ahead. <laughs> and, but I, I love you that you're doing it. And the idea is to grow slow and steady, but mm -hmm. you want to build a brand for the long term. You're, mm -hmm. not, you're not flipping a house here. You're not building it to flip it or anything. This is your life now. No, this is it. This man. is it. This is like make or break and there's no breaking you know yeah. do you guys remember that scene in glenn gary glenn ross when alec baldwin comes in and talks to all the guys in the very room very much so yeah Man, no, i don't think i've seen yeah. that movie. <laughs> do you wanna he, he can recite it can, oh can you yeah. yeah and it's like you know the ben affleck boiler room thing yeah. and, and you know when they kind of just go off and and that's the way i look at this it's do or die. Yeah, man. There's no. Uh, I don't get coffee if I don't close. So That's let's just it. get this. Uh, <laughs> That's let's it. Let's get this going. I'll drink man. to that. Yeah. <laughs> this is just coffee this week, folks. That is a uh, a standing uh, watch for us. I think we've put every uh, employee through that. Oh yeah, multiple times. Of listen, this is the way it is. Um, you think it's easy? It's not easy, and nobody said it is. But get out there and do it. Yeah. And stop crying about it. That's and, right. You know, it's, it's part of it. So we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, uh, you plan to build a brand for the long term. What does it mean, and how what, uh, how do you do that plan? How is it going to be accomplished? We're with Mo, Molly from Patina Cigars, and later, the biggest cigar industry company in the world is for sale. Why and who's going to buy them? We'll talk about that. We're live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist.
It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Brian Charles, living in Bangkok, Thailand, Mr. Jonathan's favorite city. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority. Brian's a funny dude. He's got some funny things to say. Hi, Brian. I know you're listening. We're back. We're smoking patina cigars with Mo Molly. Welcome back, everybody. 
Well, uh, Dave has this story about, <laughs> about a coin gotta, that, yeah. unfortunately, it takes about 45 minutes to, for him to get to the point that but the coin ended up The coin, did it aging. have a patina when you- It go- had a patina, and I, and, oh, I great. Used, <laughs> and I used baking soda, and I rubbed it off, and I made the coin beautiful, and I brought it to the coin dealer at yeah. that point, because yeah. now it's all shiny and brand new, yeah. and it was a 100-year-old coin, and he goes, what did you do? And I said, I made it all nice and clean and beautiful, and he said, it's worthless now. <laughs> so I put it in a flower pot. Yeah. to keep it for years and years and then I'm going to pull it out and this was 40 years ago yeah. <laughs> and I moved since and some there's a, there's a pot somewhere with a $100 coin stick, stuck in it then $100 coin in it then and that was it I told a story before and everybody beats me up that it was the most uninteresting story but now, it's lacking it in had fascination to, it had to do with the patina mm-hmm. of how patina affected was, my life was it a $100 coin before you ruined yes. it or after before I ruined okay. it. And then he said it was worth us. Like if it was a dollar piece, <laughs> it's worth a dollar because you cleaned it up so beautiful. But there's a mm. value to patina yeah. is the point here. That's right. It's like people that keep telling me to color my beard. <coughs> this is, hey, this is natural, That's man. That's right. You just got to let it go. It, it shows the war you've been through so <laughs> That's far. That's right. <laughs> Before you know it, your hair is going to turn this color. Yeah. And it's going to go mm. completely white. And you know you work your ass off to make that happen. It's mm-hmm. like every president of the United States that makes it through eight mm-hmm. years, the difference in those eight years, oh, they may yeah. as well have aged 30 <laughs> years. It's unreal, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. As long as your hair doesn't fall out like Jonathan's, right. then you'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. I shave my hair. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, building a brand for the long term, what does that mean? What's the idea here? The idea is that you're going to ride the waves, you know, and uh, – that you can't give up, kind of like what we talked about. There is no fail, uh, and and just working through everything that gets thrown your way, uh, whether it's uh, the c- cigar related, market related, regulatory related. You just keep firing through, man. And uh, I look at it as kind of like a three pronged approach. You have your uh, your face to face, being on the road. That's part of it. Number one. You have to have a good product, right? You got to sure. have a cigar that that's Absolutely. gonna, you know, do something at least stand on its own, yeah. if you will. And then, uh, then there's the social media aspect uh, and things like that. And as time has gone on, you know, look, when you're a small brand, you don't have thirty grand to throw in a cigar aficionado, right. right? You're not just just can't do that. So, connecting uh, to people helps bridge that gap, but also social media. And then the podcast that I do helps kind of the more listeners get to that. Then the more people that know about Patina. All right, so let's let's get a hundred thousand people over to your podcast, Sultans yeah. of Smoke. Yeah, yeah. So what they do is go on your social, your your favorite podcast catcher, find mm. Sultans of Smoke, hit subscribe, listen yeah. to a show. I'm going to do it myself, so uh, give that a shot and let's see uh, if we can and, rock. And excuse your world. the ignorance on there. We, uh, you know, we're ignorant. That's all right. Do you, uh, Do you yeah. handle your own distribution of so, the brand? So my cigars are distributed by uh, Tobacco Tobacco's Mundial, which is uh, Andrew Wood out of Fort Worth, Texas. So he handles all the distribution and everything. So really, you're not backpacking orders. You're out on the road and you're the yep. face of the brand. Yeah, send him the mm-hmm. orders and he does it. Yep, yep, exactly. And yeah. you import it, bring it to right to him. Here yeah, he, he import he handles all. He of handles that. it all. Yeah, man, he's oh, man. he's awesome. He's and he's also one of the foremost uh, knowledgeable people on the FDA, and that's that's been big for me. So uh, anything that's coming down pipeline FDA stuff, I'm always kind of ahead of it because I have him. Right. Oh, uh, it's so important. And um, that's extremely important. We talked about uh, you want to position yourself for success. And if I have an, you know, an eyes and ears on the regulatory phase and I'm trying to do this other stuff, that is invaluable. What does it look like the FDA is going to do as far as affecting you? <sighs> I think... Not to be a Debbie Downer. Yeah, no, it, it's a great question. I think a lot of people want to know the answer to that. I... And this is going to sound really naive, but uh, there's a big part of me that just, unless there's something major, I just try not to think about it. Because if you sit there and think about all of the things that could go wrong, they're going to start to go wrong. Sure. Yeah. Um, but with that said, I've been long saying that I felt online cigar sales were the lowest hanging fruit for the government to go after, even before trying to test blends and all of that, because you can't test something you really don't understand right and so we uh i think we're a little bit away from that i could be wrong yeah. it's just my guess 
Uh, they don't even have the machinery yet. They don't I mean, know how to do it. So that's the good news, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the labels are probably going to come at some point. Yeah. We just saw Canada go to the mm. plain packaging. Terrible news. Uh, that, that was bad. We're yeah. seeing this push towards the 21 stuff, which I'm... And you guys changed my perspective on this, by the way. At first, I was like, well, how many guys younger There's than There's not 21? many, but that's not the point. But that's not the point. They're yeah. going to continue to... Uh, if you give an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's right. Plain yeah. and simple. Hawaii's yeah. looking at 30. It's crazy. With, with the yeah. expectation of 100. Yep. Right, yeah. You know, right. and this Here. is how it happens and, and how I've seen all these things. The, I left the state of Massachusetts at, at a 0 to 12% tax. 12% wasn't going to change my right. world. I had three stores. And 12%, right. you're really going to leave for 12%? Right. I know what's going to happen. Right. It's going to go from 12 to 20 to 30 That's to 40. Right. But That's boom, true. exactly what ended up happening. I'm not a mind reader, but just look historically at what happens. So if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And yeah. not that we have... Even the uh, the government says it's going to be less than 2% of people from 18 to 21 use the product. Right. Less percent of your percentage yeah. so it, it, it's basically nothing first off i don't want to lose two percent i want to gain two percent if, right. if possible but then it becomes the you know truly is is an adult mm. 18 night let's go to the 20 mm -hmm. is an adult 20 years old and all the things that they can do like vote yeah and and that's okay but they can't actually make a decision whether rent to a buy car this or not. Yeah. start a family buy a house right they In can they can they can have a get a child. They can have it. They can not even have a child. They can actually adopt, adopt a child. Yep. So yep. They, that's okay. But Foster family. You, you can decide if you're going to have yeah. to buy a child from somebody else is okay, but not buy a cigar. I don't think that's <laughs> the nice way to say it. <laughs> it's exactly it's how done. it is, but you say it a different way. Apologies to all of you no. who've been adopted. It was not a purchase. It was a purchase. <laughs> a, a apology, it was accepted. a transaction. Yeah. That's right. Barry was of them. kind of offended by the words you chose to use. Hmm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was a purchase. There's lawyer fees involved and what have you. There's a transaction that takes place. And, <laughs> and, and who gets but, the money? But it's not like who gets the, the money mom, on that purchase? Twenty thousand for him. His, his mother and father, for lack of a better word, they're not you. Your, but the people that raised you paid. For you, there were fees involved they, in attorney fees. I heard that they asked for that. their money back years right. later, but that's they did. The they did. They yes. felt they got a defective product. Right. <laughs> no refunds. No refunds. <laughs> you already said. licked it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, so you know, I don't think you can be ignorant on the fact, but you do have a guy watching and studying to see what what goes over. So yeah, a, as things change and move out, but. but I mean, the worst thing could happen if they ever said, you know, here was the line in the sand of 2007 and say, yeah. okay, I can't imagine that happening. To yeah. be honest with you, I think they're going to be major lawsuits because they're going to yeah. knock so many people out of, the, out of the business at that point. Yeah. I think it's part of their, when, when they do do something bad to us, part of the thing is going to be, all right, we're not going to mess with the, with the date. Mm -hmm. Oh, we win, mm -hmm. but we're going to do this, 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 this. So it'll be one of those concession things, maybe. Uh, I hope that's yeah. the way it turns they're out. They're not going to get people to, to quit smoking. They're going to get people to change the way they get their cigars, right? And cigars are not just about smoking. And, and I think that's what's lost on a lot of people. Cigars are... Um, it's a community. A, a community. It's a lifestyle. It's looked at as it's something you do in a social setting. It's something you do uh, in solitude uh, to gather your thoughts or to whatever. So it has a lot of functions beyond just smoking. It's more than that. And I think that uh, a lot of people don't necessarily look at it that way. And additionally, yeah, we might lose some people that, that are become cigar smokers, but uh, there's always that that allure of uh, something that brings people together that people want to be a part of. And I think that's something our industry will always have. Okay, that ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars. And here's a little segment that we do to see uh, which hypothetical battle you think you would take here. And then one is never have to work again. Uh, you'll never be rich, but uh, stuff uh, will will work out. You, everything's so fine. So on welfare? No, you're you're just you're gonna just do okay. Versus never sleep again, but you won't feel tired, but you'll suffer negative health effects, lack of sleep. Um, so going on welfare. Going on welfare as opposed to never sleeping again. Yeah, I like my sleep. 
But you're not going to feel tired. You'll be okay. But there'll be negative health effects. Yeah. There's no negative health effects of being on, health, on welfare. I'm taking that one. Yeah, I'll take the government cheese all day, every day. Yeah? It yeah. melts better than the rest of the yeah, cheeses. Yes, it does. It says cheese product on it, though. That's what makes me nervous. All right. So here's how I feel on it. The opposite of you guys, because part of my whole game is success. And that's what I like to play. And I look at the non-sleep as an option for eight more hours. But if you die you in two years yeah. from the negative side effects, you've, you're, you've got a net zero. You don't get more. It doesn't say you, you die less. from it. No. You get negative health effects. Yeah, but, but if you're too old, healthy to begin if with. If you're always <laughs> sick and you know in and out of the hospital, no, I'd rather be healthy. And then you're stuck in a hospital and you can't sleep? <laughs> Who wants to deal with that? But I'm, I'm rested. You have Ooh. somebody like Jonathan giving you a sponge bath? Well, it'll be none of that. <laughs> there'll be none of that. Mo, what he, do you want to do? He already made me promise to pull the uh, plug if he's ever a vegetable. I would be, let's look at it, not just physical health, but mental health. I think that I would be in a really bad place mentally if I just took stuff from people. I would have to, I'd have to earn it. I'd have to, I, I wouldn't sleep, I don't sleep a lot anyway. I mean, I sleep like three, four hours a night, so whatever. Yeah, it's unhealthy for you. Yeah, but it is. I'm okay with that, <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> Yeah, so here's. I'm not the, changing my answer. Here, it doesn't have to change your, mind, your answer, but here is an entrepreneurial mind versus the guy that writes the, the name on the front of the check versus the guy that writes the name on the back of the check. You could spend it any way you want. Well, you're I'm, wrong. I'm just saying that it, it's a different theory of what wrong. it is. So, Ed Sullivan, what do you think? I don't know. Can I do stuff as a volunteer? <laughs> you can, but you can't make any money. No, I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing that. So he's going on the welfare too. He's going well, on. No, you didn't say I got to give up what I have. You just oh. just going to get by. Yeah. Just going to get by with you, with your, you know. Well, I got to do something. I can't just sit on a couch. He doesn't play video games. Hmm. I mean, when a baby's born, they don't say, "I hope he's rich." They go, "You know, I hope he's healthy." He makes a good point. That's what they say. Yes, health, health is health they is say. <laughs> Who are these people? This, this doesn't say that you're going to be sick. It says you're going to have negative health effects due right. to lack of sleep. That's sick. I think the segment is completely dead. Can we go back to the coin story? We, we can. <laughs> so, Jesus, where is that it. coin? Somewhere there's did, a money tree. Did somebody yeah. fight? There is. There's a tree. And that coin's probably worth a thousand bucks right now. Maybe more. I got to look it up. I'd Ro be interested to know that. But um, some of the flavors here I'm getting on this, Barry. Nuttiness, you're saying pistachio. pistachio. I'm okay with that. Uh, add some salt to that. Salty. Yep, there's a little salty bit of salt. components. Salted pistachios. Mo, do you say anything uh, as selling this product? Is there some write up of what they should taste? Um, I try to uh, actually stay away from that as much as possible. You can't always, because some consumers really just, man, what, what can I expect? Um, but I try to stay away from that because palates are so personal. Everyone's going to... I mean, like, here we are. We're four guys, right? And we're all tasting different stuff. But, you know... No, Barry and Dave are both tasting salty nuts. That's usually <laughs> my job. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Our cigar. roles have been reversed since last week, apparently. Right. So you're, like he's, he's identifying his... But you know? yeah. normally, a Nicaraguan cigar, mm -hmm. somebody would say, oh, peppery. I'm not mm -hmm. getting that from mm -hmm. this. So there's people, as a retailer, there's people that come in and say, I like or I dislike peppery cigars. Well, this is perfect for you because yeah. it's not peppery. Right. It's mm -hmm. Nicaraguan it's cigar. Almost, it's I mean, it, it almost presents on the palate. It's so clean and so aromatic. It almost presents like a Costa Rican cigar. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, being that it's so close to the border. No, so I'm using that those, tobacco. That's why I But asked. if any of those influences crossed over where maybe there's some sort of fermentation that's going on that's different than what normally happens in Nicaragua. Interesting. Well, they're away from them. Is, is there a different fermentation cycle there at that particular factory? They do things different? Well, you know, um, part of it is, you know, with Claudio coming over from Davidoff and yeah. having worked for Henke and stuff like that, I think that the fermentation process, and I don't know if he wants me to admit this, I think it is, uh, similar to uh, Davidoff's fermentation. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the way they, they kind of do things. Yeah, more of a so. Dominic, Dominican way done in Nicaragua. Of maybe they would explain the difference, but the retro hell of this cigar. I'm not is, falling I, for I, that I'm ever not, again. I don't want you to fall for it. <laughs> yeah, but it's ridiculously smooth. You know, I'll retro hail maybe once every four or five puffs. On this one, I'm retro hailing almost every puff. He did it. You, so Shut you up. can do it. You, you're in his brain. <laughs> it's ridiculously smooth, and he did it. And you did it, and, and you didn't even choke yet. I think you got it. 
it's funny you guys yeah. bring up retro hailing because I when I was when I was in retail too, I was always like guys would, I'd see guys puffing on cigars, right? I say, have you guys ever tried to retro hail this and really get a taste of the cigar? Um, and I think that's what like there are guys who smoke cigars and women who smoke cigars and and then there's people that are cigar smokers, right? And so um, I've had them do that, and they literally will go back and start smoking a bunch of different stuff they used to smoke. Like, God, this is so different. Yeah. And, you know, unlock your palate, man. Just uh, try to really get into a cigar and, and see I'm what good. comes to you. I'm you know? good. Why not? Uh, it's like getting water up your nose is what it feels like every time I retrohale. It's like eating really? kale yeah, for lunch. Burns. Kale for lunch. You, Ed, you don't do it. You, you smoke more cigars than probably all of us. Yeah. You you don't retrohale? Oh, no, I do. You do? <laughs> Always. Always. Every puff? No. Or just every once You know, it depends on the cigar. Something like this, um, with Barry, I'll retrohale more frequently than a very strong cigar, but still even a strong cigar, every fifth or sixth, maybe. So you think about it before you do it, and you say, oh, I think I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm looking for a blast of taste. I, I do, actually. I'd like to sting the nostrils now. After a while, it doesn't sting anymore. I, I disagree. I've been trying this for 10 years, and it still doesn't work. No, I, I'm close to zero sting on this one. It's yeah. a very smooth retro. We used to have a contest to see who could uh, retro hail a Padron 26 Maduro number 35. The little, you know, the little guy. Sure. Oh, man, that's... That's a retro hill right yeah. there. <laughs> Barry, I'm up for the challenge. That'll so put am the I. fork in your shrimp that, cocktail. Yeah, that that's sounds like next a, week. that's like a sounds like a challenge here. IPCPR, you do it? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, I'll be nomadic most likely this year, just kind of walking around. And uh, I ah. have shared uh, a booth with Mombacho the last couple of years, but this year I'll be solo and uh, meeting with customers and retailers just kind of like on the side or whatever. All so. right. I, I've been seeing a lot more of that mm -hmm. happening lately. A, a big expense, IPCPR. It, it is, it, yeah. It's like you'd never believe. And it's not the dues to the IPCPR or anything like that. It becomes the, the trade show itself. The trade show itself. Wow, Absolutely. man. It, yeah. It's what a ripoff. It's it's tough, especially when you're a small brand. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just the cost benefit. And uh, I would rather take those funds and use them to come on trips with the reps, to go meet shops in shops, you know, um, and actually interact with not only the shop owner, shop manager, employees, but also their customers as well. Well, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat at your size. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not like you have a global brand yet. And Absolutely. It sounds like you're going about it the right way. All the big name brands that we know now that are still owned by a single person are all dudes that hit the road early yeah. on, and they got 20 years in. Yeah. So typically at IPCPR, that's when everybody launches the new line and the yeah. new sizes. You got anything planned that you'll... I, I'm, I'm shooting for this year to come out with a Maduro. Oh. Um, I'm working with Connecticut Broadleaf right now, which is uh, something I'm looking at. We'll see what, what works best, but uh, that I think will be the next patina, so the, a Maduro. So it makes all the sense. You have four sizes of a Connecticut, four sizes of Habano. Yep. It would be the same thing. And, yeah, and then it, it's the natural progression, and mm. then you got something... Mm -hmm. Uh, will there be other brands or will Patina be the brand? Uh, Patina will be the brand for now. Uh, I have, so, you know, you're always looking at stuff, right? And so, um, depending on what happens with the FDA, yeah. I have some options that there are some names that, you know, you could certainly look at that, that might work down the road. But um, as of right now, everything will be under the Patina banner. All right. Have you assembled any of the Maduros with uh, Pennsylvania Broadleaf? I have. Yeah, yeah, as a binder and as a filler. And then maybe putting Connecticut Broadleaf in the filler, reversing it? So I haven't done that. Uh, what I've worked with is, uh, like I said, a broad, Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper with a Pennsylvania uh, uh, sorry, binder and filler, but uh, not the other way around. With how difficult Connecticut <coughs> Broadleaf is mm -hmm. to procure, I would mm. expect that that would be an expensive proposition. It, it, that, and that's part of the thing too, man, is that you have to, uh, you look at the market and you, and I look at what I consider to be the best Broadleafs on the market. And if I'm willing to smoke any of those over what I come up with, I'm not going to release it. Mm -hmm. And the price point also has to be right. So Correct. I got to be able to come up with a blend. You know, we talked about blend, like this looks great on paper, right? Well, the blend not only has to, to perform well, it has to burn well, and it has to be something you could replicate time and time again. So you could come up with some awesome blend, but it's, and then when you discuss it, 
Well, I'm not sure how often we could replicate this. Right, and it becomes a one-off. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, this is the special thing that comes out, but it's no way to build a company. No, you can't. Yeah. And um, a, a strong core line is going to be the key to long-term success. Yeah. So uh, I'm not in a rush. I mean, <laughs> I had one of my good buddies tell me one time, he goes, I said, man, I really got to start thinking about coming out with something new. And he goes, well, you shouldn't get too down about it. He goes, in reality, is most people have never heard of you anyway. <laughs> so your cigars are, gonna, are still new to them. That's and right. I said, well, you're, you're right. I mean, I, I wouldn't go about it the way you just did. But yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> kind of hurt. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but oh, it's true. Shot right to the family jewels right there. That's that, a buddy you want to keep around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely ice involved there. Plenty of places to grow. Uh, in the Sultans of Smoke, what do you talk about on that podcast? Um, Wait, well, you have your own brand. You're talking about other people's brands or just sitting around smoking cigars with your buddy? Yeah, so that's so we also have uh, my buddy Mukau Rich on Instagram. A lot of uh, cigar Instagram guys know who he is. Um, and then Danny Vasquez from um, Romacraft. Sure. So it's us four every week pretty oh. much. And so uh, we, we talk about all different types of stuff, um, some cigar, no, some non-cigar stuff, but mostly cigar-related stuff, stuff we've smoked what we're seeing in the industry, consumer trends, retailer trends. Uh, we talk about stuff, not so much behind the scenes per se, but stuff that a lot of consumers don't think about. Like, what's a rep's job like? What do they actually encounter? What do, you, mm. what do we encounter? And so we're able to kind of peel back the curtain a little bit because like myself and Danny especially, and then Drew, my buddy, uh, when we were working on Sultan's A Smoke Cigar, we've kind of seen that. Yeah. So we're able to talk about it a little bit. Very interesting. Can't wait mm -hmm. to catch that myself. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you Appreciate guys very it. much. Good luck. Everybody out there, try Patina. Go to your favorite brick and mortar stores. If they don't have it, ask for it. Tell them to get it in. And uh, how do they get a hold of Patina. Uh, patina Cigars at Gmail is my email, and uh, my Instagram is Patina Cigars, uh, and I'm hoping to get a Facebook page up and running uh, soon, and that'll just be Patina Cigars. All right. Good luck out there. Thank you, guys. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the biggest cigar company in the world is for sale. Why? And who's going to buy them? Also, last week we had the Barry Show, and lots of people have a lot to say about it. We'll dig into the mailbag and tell you what they're saying. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced, and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations, 
foundations of cigar science basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Nicholas Melillo, a.k.a. Nick Aragua from Foundation Cigar Company. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back with our number two, broadcasting live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Cigars for sale, lots of them. The biggest cigar company in the world is for sale. Why and who is going to buy them? And we're going to get to mailbags, too. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, first, uh, let's light the second cigar, which is the Care Package cigar. Yep, today's second cigar is part of the Care Package. It is La Carême from Crown Heads. It's manufactured in the Dominican Republic at Tabacalera La Alianza. Features a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, Sumatra binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. All right, we got a box, semi box press, soft box pressed. Yeah, it looks like a soft press. S soft box press. So kind of a rustic looking wrapper. I mean, it is. There's a lot of people that say they're using Connecticut broadleaf, and they're probably not. This is Connecticut broadleaf. You could really tell Ab by looking at absolutely. it. Absolutely. And it, you read my mind because it's a, it is a rough looking wrapper, it's toothy. 
Um, it's not perfect in Toothy, color. It's denty. You're right. <laughs> and that is broadleaf. It's That's a th- it. It's a thick leaf, and, it, and it's not looks pleasingly like a- beautiful as the patina was. Right. The wrapper looks so beautiful, seamless. This is the complete opposite of that. It's a pretty ugly-looking wrapper, this looks but like it has a taste that no other they cigar They wrapped has. the cigar in leather. Remember back in the old days of uh, Henry Clay with the ugly cigar or something? Mm-hmm. They, used to be, they were always so good, but they looked terrible. And that's how broadleaf is. So you got to get past the look of it. Wondering, use broadleaf as a binder, and it's hidden inside that you get the taste and you don't dare, but people tend to gravitate towards a broadleaf wrapper. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not. Well, 60% of the flavors from the wrapper are some, yeah. something like that. That is what That's a say. debatable topic. Of course. Of course. All right, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Cold draw, barbecue, spare ribs. It's like you do it to piss me (laughs) off, Ed. I I do a little bit. He was on point with that, but... (laughs) I'd like to get Is my little... Is this what barbecue spirit ribs tastes like? I've never eaten it. We, uh, we need to go to Carloon. Mm. We wow. Do. Can we go now? Or There's we no R finish in it. This? It's Carloon. Carloon. I haven't been yet, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you will. Wow, have he it. just We've found been... a way to have you buy him dinner. <laughs> We've been talking about this road trip to Carloon for like four years. All right, let's do we it. We need oh, to do it. And don't they have comedy, too? We could... Uh, oh, we turn Double it into a up whole night. It becomes yeah. a let's, let's business right off at that uh, point. When the right comedians are there, if Tony V's playing, we put a thing around it, and uh, we'll all go. All right, I'll keep an eye on keep it. Keep an eye on it. In the it. meantime, we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Attaché featuring single action. Press the button down, the fire comes alive. Easy adjustment wheel in the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. It's an easy pocket lighter, and it's only nine ninety nine. Wow. Nine ninety nine. It looks like a de Jeep type of thing, but it's a yes. That's the those that are just listening to show what does this looks like. It looks like a de Jeep, but it is a push down button with a single nice pinpoint accurate single. And it's an easy push down button. It's not a it's not a struggle. Yeah, there's none no of child the vert- safety lock on this. None of the verticals are a struggle, but this is soft and fluid. Unbelievable price. Some of the some of the. Child safety locks, I think, are a good idea for the simple reason that people are idiots and they point things at themselves. It works both ways. Yeah, it does. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of like Jonathan. (laughs) Stunned silence. So we're we're selling today uh, the two guys' anniversary tickets um, for uh, September 11th, 34th anniversary. it's been uh, two hours now, three hours, and we are three quarters of the way through the tickets. Selling out. So. It'll, it'll sell out in the next yeah, couple hours. When I came in around nine, there were the tailgaters out in the parking lot waiting. Outside legitimate tailgaters yeah. in the back of their, their pickup truck on the side with the, with the beach chairs or whatever you yeah. call them. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, all right, last week's show. What a mess. I, I got into that, but um, we had at least um, people chime in. So let's hear some So of we it. had uh, the, the original culprit, Sean Stevens, write in through the Contact Us page. Just wanted to say thank you for one of the best shows ever last week. He's the one to push you to drink. That's Yeah, that's the rumor. Yeah. Uh, still think Barry did a great job. I got an apology letter from As him. the host. <laughs> Direct I to me. Did enjoy egging Jonathan on with the constant shoot it chance on the YouTubes. Uh, to Dave, without you, the Cigar Authority wouldn't be possible. So please raise a glass to him for making last week's show well, possible. Let's not. <laughs> Break Sincerely, out the wrong. <laughs> your biggest <laughs> Michigan fan, Sean Maduro Man Stevens. All right. So uh, he, he liked it. The best yet. I think you must have some. This was the worst show ever. Things. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John writes through the contact us page. It's about time you guys let your hair down and oh, have some God. fun. He doesn't have any hair. He's bald. <laughs> this past show, Large and in Charge had a great interview, provided insight to cigars, which is lacking at times, and a ton of, or shall I say, two tons of laughs. Jonathan added to Barry's shiny moment. 
and I can only hope when Dave misses a show, these two realize that they are the real reason people tune in. Whoa. Dave, you wow. need to lighten up and sit out more shows. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh. What's this guy's name? <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous. Anonymous. Oh. Uh, that's John. John writing. John, just John, huh? John Stevens, in fact. I just don't think he and uh, Sean are related. John Stevens sounds like a fake profile you made up. <laughs> well, what I do, when I suspect that, I, I reply to the emails, and if it bounces back, the email doesn't get read. All so right. it has to be a legitimate email in All order right. to get onto the show. All right. Uh, See, this is Christopher writing through the Contact Us page uh, with respect to the after show. I don't think I'm overhyping the situation when I say this week's after show, 5-1, will be the most anticipated one yet. This is before the show uh, had aired. And perhaps wow. of all time, I couldn't get enough of drunk Mr. Jonathan wow, and Dave's like reactions <laughs> to him. Your show made being stuck in traffic on the Beltway Parkway beatable. I honestly can't wait for the hilarity to continue. Thanks for always providing a show that entertains and informs us. Not the way at I thought this would time. go at all. Well, I do have one negative Nelly or negative mm. Nancy, as it were. And Dave from the Cigar with Darwin. His he name writes. is <laughs> uh, Noah Nancy is his last name. Uh, last week's episode, I certainly picked the wrong episode to check out the video version of the oh, show. I'll say. <laughs> I felt like I was watching Summersby. <laughs> this is somebody that listens to the show yeah if you haven't caught the uh, cigars and movie pairing don't yeah. <laughs> it was dumb uh let's see carl writes through the contact us page show idea after last week's show i have an idea why not try pairing cigars with clothing for example, oh, does God. a cigar's flavor change when you take your pants off? <laughs> Perhaps the retro hail smooths out when you don't have a shirt on. No. These are all observations from last week's show. Keep up the entertainment. It, it made everything taste uncomfortable. Save some of them for the after show today. So we're going to have more of these uh, notes for the after show because I got to get to the big news. Uh, and I'd say it's one of the biggest news in the cigar industry, period, uh, in a long, long time, if ever. Uh, Imperial Brands is selling Altadas. So who is Altadas? Altadas, uh, Altadas was formed in 1999. It was a merger between Tabacalera, a Spanish company monopoly, and Sierra, which was a French company monopoly, including ownership of the former Consolidated Cigar and half ownership of Cuban state tobacco company Habanos SA that distributes all the Cuban cigars. So big, big company was formed. Imperial, which is a big cigarette company out there, um, Imperial's joint venture for distributing Cuban cigars, Habanos, is a 50-50 joint venture with Cuba. Altadas is the largest producer of mass market cigars and premium cigars in the world. But let it be known that the mass market cigars, which is, let's say, El Producto and things like that, uh, I know it's um, Backwoods and all kinds of brands that they have, that is not part of the sale. They're keeping that. But it's all premium cigars on all aspects of it. Distribution, through the catalogs, through everything, um, is what they're selling. So they're keeping the money. They want the money. Uh, they are the fourth largest producer of to all tobacco products in the world. The company uh, acquired British tobacco giant Imperial, and now it's Imperial Brands in 2008, uh, becomes Imperial Brands. And if you recall, going back a few years ago, Altadas, which was just a company, Altadas is one, having everything in it, became a separate company, Altadas USA, which is very interesting to me because I look at something like that and why that expense was made make, creating an Altadas USA when you had an Altadas separating some of them. There was reasons behind that, and we'll get to some of that. So who is in the Imperial Brands? Uh, consumers of tobacco, they, they own Winston, Maverick, Cool, USA Gold, Salem, Davidoff cigarettes, they own the no rights kidding. to Davidoff cigarettes. Um, Davidoff sold that to them years ago. Also, Dutch Masses, Backwoods, vape products, including Blue, which is the biggest selling one, right? BLU. Also, all Altadas cigar brands, which include Monte Cristo, Romeo, lots of things, right? All the uh, basically Cuban front marks that are placeholders in the U.S. in case yes. the embargo lifts. Yeah, along with their other brands that yep. they have. Imperial also has the mass market lower end um, cigar business and international rights uh, to Davidoff that I mentioned, along with 
Galway's and West brands, which is high-end cigarette brands. Imperial um, later, and this is, I think, an important thing, um, the last thing they've done is a rollout of heat not burn products in Japan. This is where it all comes down to, because what they're selling, the reason why they're selling is because they want more money to put into products they think they can make even more money off of. And I think this is the product. The heat, heat not burn products that in just Japan. just got approved by the FDA this week, too. That's right. Yep. Approved by the FDA for Philip Morris. Yes. So Philip Morris is ahead of the game here. Mm -hmm. So this company that owns Winston, right, their, their arch rival, um, says, okay, we get, we got to get into this strong. So they're playing catch up to Philip Morris. Um, on this heat not burn product, and and it's the next step to vape. So all the government's going after vape. So as they're doing that, and they they both own vape products, they come out with this new product and say, okay, destroy the vape if you want. Here's this product that heats up tobacco but doesn't burn it. So it becomes a different product at that point. <clears throat> You're playing um, games with definitions at that point. Yeah, it's a different product. So it's a it's a gummy type of thing that heats up. It is, it is made of tobacco, though, m much like they say vape is, but it isn't. It doesn't have to be. Right. Um, British cigarette maker will start selling its Pulse device, P-U-L-Z-E, and you'll start wow, hearing of really this. they're really cool taking out letters, putting different letters in. Yep. Uh, beginning May 6th. So that's two days from now. Yeah. Today's the 4th. In Japan. So this is it. it, it the, um, the Philip Morris brand is IQOS. Or, you know, it's going to be funny of what these people are going to call this thing. It's a heat not burn. It's IQOS, whatever the hell that means. It's pulse. It's, you know, these things end up taking generic terms on like Q-tips or, sure. you know, whatever it's going to end up being. So what is going to end up happening with that? This is my belief of this is the reason why I'm selling this whole thing because there's lots of money to be made in that. And and, and they're, they're, they're kind of trying to fire sale this, if I'm not mistaken, because they said in their press release that it could be broken up. Bits and pieces could go, yeah. different people. Yeah, I'm sure they would love to sell it all to one piece, but the problem is going to be who the hell could handle this whole one piece. You're talking about they're, at, they're asking prices about $2 billion. With a B. Uh, <clears throat> with a B. Um, I think it actually will sell for less. I think they're lucky if they get 1.2 billion. It's I, I did a lot of calculations and talked to a lot of people about this. But April 30th, 2019, Imperial Brands said they plan to sell its global premium cigar business as part of the plan to cut debt and reinvest the money for further growth. Cut debt and rein, re, re invest in money to further growth of that other they didn't say of the other product but it's of the other product does this kind of explain the collaboration mm -hmm. that's been happening so you, so you sat in one in a meeting that i had yeah. this week which was very interesting um i talked to a lot of people let me tell you my phone's been ringing off the wall that everybody wants to talk about this and say what does this mean what are you thinking um because initially, when somebody does a collaboration, you start thinking in terms of, okay, there's going to be a buyout. But really, if they do the collaboration with the right person, they don't have to supply themselves with the raw materials. Right. They don't need a factory. So the fact is, from what I've been hearing, is that they knew they were going to get rid of this. And the biggest expense that happens in the cigar industry is the cost of tobacco. They hold on to it for years and years and years. And actually, you look at a model like Imperial Tobacco that's on in, you know, they shoot these things out of machine guns. They, they pull out so fast that they make these products. When it comes to a cigar, it's years right. of it. And the cost of the tobacco and to fermentation and everything they do of years and years and years, they look at it and say, well, what a waste of capital. Because, you, yeah, you tie up the capital money. for all that time, or you could just pay a, a little bit more. And if somebody else wastes their capital. If you say, I'm going to make a 1,000 boxes of cigars and I'm going to do it from seed to finish, it's going to cost you millions of dollars right. to actually make it. And, that, and, and that's years. why the big, At least three years. Right. So that's where the problem... So now looking at it, and again, you know, we're Monday morning quarterbacking at this point. 
they started doing collaborations with people so that they didn't need raw, t raw tobacco and say, okay, let's do it with this person. We'll end up handling everything, but have somebody else make the cigar for us. We'll distribute it. We'll make money, but we don't have to store and hang on to tobacco. They already did, and the, over the years, their inventory of raw tobacco has come down and down and down, which is all profit at that point. So that's what happened. It, was that planned out? I would bet yes. You know, we're talking about a different game here. When we're talking about little companies compared to this, it's a, it's a whole different world. So who's handling the sale? It's a company called AZ Capital, and they're advising Imperial Tobacco on the sale. Um, AZ Capital is based in Madrid, Spain, and there's a boutique investment bank uh, offering financial advisory service to family-owned and middle and large corporations. And this is about the largest. It provides mergers and acquisitions, debt and capital restructuring, uh, which is interesting also that th these people are there, and strategic alliances and joint ventures. So what? They're headhunters. But what they might be doing is putting people together breaking it up and putting different people together for different items. And listen, I, I actually got phone calls on that too. If Did you get approached to be part of anything? I have not signed a non-disclosure agreement as yet. Did you get but approached? You, yes. By more than one person? Yes. So there's, there's more than one person that's reached out to you saying... I'm looking at putting something together yes. to buy this. Yes. And at the beginning of it, it's like, ha, 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 this is ridiculous. Um, we're talking about $2 billion, and then it gets to be, well, it's not worth $2 billion. It's worth $1.2 billion. And uh, I said, I'm a little shy on that $1.2 <laughs> billion. I'm actually, forget about it. No, no. It, it becomes bank's money. It doesn't become... Our money, it becomes an investment and it's a strategic thing. And this is well, you're an, obvious, about people, you're an obvious choice from a strategy standpoint uh, because what have they failed at is the brick and mortar stores. That's something that they can't do. They're just they're hemorrhaging money. Yeah, remember they own JR, uh, which is a mail order company. They own Santa Clara, which is a wholesale company. They own Casa Monte Cristos. They own JR stores. Uh, they, there's a lot, and nobody. I, I can't picture anybody, and we're going to get into that, of who would want to buy this whole thing. Um, there's too much in it. And Is it there? ends up getting, well, then you got the Cuban stuff, and then you got that Donald Trump just started this thing where lawsuits can happen within a company well, that, that has brands. And isn't it funny that a week previous, that, and then they end up saying, okay, let's get rid of this thing? How much of this plays into the Helms Burton Act? Some of it. Some of it, which is the. Which is trading with the enemy. Yeah. Which they. Make, you know, a U.S. company is going to make money from the sale of a Cuban product as it is now. But if they break this thing up... Well, that's not a U.S. You, company, but U.S. citizens can buy in yeah. and be shareholders yeah. or stockholders in so, that company. So I watched the, the stock, and at the moment where they announced that, the stock was at thirty one fifty four. dollars uh, This was on Friday... Um, and on No, this was... Uh, on the April 30th, on Friday at closing, it was down to $30. So it actually dropped a couple of points, almost a couple of points. Um, I think that kind of said something to me like, oh, no, this turns out to be a good thing. Now I'm be believing more of they want $2 billion, and they're going to be lucky if they get one. It's actually worth less than they think it's going to be. So it's possible it doesn't get sold or get sold for a long period of time, or they say, let's dump this pig because there's just too much going on here. Uh, why are they selling? Imperial's profits have been weighed down by investments in e-cigarettes, in particular the boost of their blue brand. They spent billions of dollars on that. Now the new non-burning device, um, the next big thing, the Pulse, um, begins, as I say, May 6 in Japan. That's why they're selling it. And Philip Morris is driving the model with their heat stick. That's another word that they're saying, a heat stick. Um, this is what I think they're investing in. This is why they're selling it, uh, along with other problems that are happening. Um, so that's what we can um, – that's why I think they're selling it, and that's who the players are in there. So um, who's big enough to buy it? All right, we're going to get to that in a minute. But first, let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. 
Every Recluse Cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse Cigar today. And it seems like it's becoming a weekly thing, but another senator has proposed their own Tobacco 21 bill with bipartisan support, making three current bills with one more, at least one more, due from Mitch McConnell. Yeah. In Florida, the Senate passed the Tobacco 21 bill, but the House says that it will not move on it or vote on it, thanks to, uh, who is it, Jose Oliva, the uh, senator down yeah. in Florida? good. And uh, meanwhile, the state of Vermont has sent the Tobacco 21 bill to the governor's desk, who is expected to sign it. United Cigars announced this week they are shipping La Giana Havana with a new updated look, featuring bands from... Nelson Alfonso, as well as in new box design. The brand is currently celebrating its 25th anniversary. Canada has announced the implementation of plain packaging beginning November 9th, with retailers needing to sell all current normal packaging by February 2022. Let the trade show wars begin, as Villiger has announced they are pulling out of IPCPR and focusing on the Tobacco Plus Expo, which occurs in February. Oh, now here's another big European giant pulling out of the IPCPR trade show. To mow IPCPR trade show, very costly or something, to, you know, it's a rounding error for Villiger, right? It's no big deal or something, but still, let's pull out of this thing. So they're pulling out. Yeah, I think IPCPR might be... Better moving it earlier in the year instead of so late in the year. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't a trade show in February have... Yeah, of course. Of course. It, but their, their competition, that's where their competition is now. And that, and that's what ended up happening and in, in where right. Villa is going to go. But uh, I think Villa is going to go to the wayside. I, I don't see... Uh, I, I think these European from premium, companies... From a premium from, Yeah, on a premium yeah. side. I, I think... Um, just, just like Imperial, I think these guys jumped in and said they learned about the cigar industry. It's not what they thought it was. It's a boutique industry. Yes. It's hand-to-hand combat, yeah. day in and day out. Yep. And lastly, new to Two Guys Cigar this, this week is uh, twoguyscigars.com this week is the Tatuaje TAA 51st. And we also released from our vaults a limited amount of the 2017 and 2018 versions of the Tatuaje TAA. And also the new updated look of La Giana Havana is available at twoguyscigars.com. I saw that. that. And uh, on next week's show, we are smoking the La Giana Havana Maduro, but we sent them out um, before the new ones had come in. The plan was to send them out when the new ones had come in, but they they came in late. So, again, this is always an issue with new cigars that come out, new packaging. The cigar has not changed a bit. So it is the same exact cigar, but unfortunately, we were down to the, t- the end here, and we had no choice. So the La Giana Maduro old ones ended up going out. We'll show you next week both packaging and everything, and we can smoke them both at the same time and prove to ourselves that they are. I've done it just to see, and it's the same cigar. But next week, we're going to talk about why cigars are good for you which should be very controversial to the people, that, not the people that are listening to it, but we're going to actually make the um, argument that they're not bad for you. They're actually good for you. We'll get into that. Uh, the following week on May 18th, selected, um, selecting the perfect tobacco for a cigar. And Mo brought them up earlier. Nelson Alfonso is going to be on. We're going to talk about different tobaccos and uh when he's selecting, the name of his company is Selected Tobacco, selecting the proper cigar. I mean, he goes down to a a real sick, geeky, sick, sick point. Degree. But um, we'll have him on there. Uh, so look forward to Nelson Alfonso coming up on May 18th. All right, I want to get to um, the the uh, who's going to buy this. But first, um, we got to go to break. So La-, La Creme by Crown Heads, we haven't given it fair due here. What are we getting for taste? What do we think of the cigar? Slightly charred. Teriyaki beef, like you would get mm-hmm. at Kowloon's, but maybe you put it on the poo poo platter fire, you get a little char going on there, and eat that. Not bad. Ed Sullivan? There's a lot of charred, yeah. charred beef here. I see the charred meat. It's not giving it to you, but it's pretty good. Dink. Uh, pretty good. Mm-hmm. You didn't like it. I can give you a bell. I'll take it. Barry liked the bell. Having that bell? Yes, I did. Yeah. I like the power. Yeah. All something. right. Teriyaki beef overcooked. Oh, yeah, with the char? Yeah. 
I think he got us. Yeah. I mean, I had to give in. It was only a matter of time. It's good. It's definitely enjoyable. Yeah. All right. We're going to break. Uh, who is going to buy Altada cigars? Barry uh, will show Mr. Jonathan how to do the asylum bit the right way. What do you think, by the way? Last week. It, it was terrible. Terrible? Okay. Uh, and an offer you can't refuse. We're live at Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. 
It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. This is Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we've got Nick coming up soon. Uh, actually, uh, he will uh, be doing the Ash Holes, um, I think. Um, it's an awkward June, kind of phrase. The Ash Holes podcast, uh-huh. <laughs> which, is, which is growing dramatically, by the way. And uh, speaking yeah. of Nick Perdomo, wouldn't he be uh, financially solid enough? To be able to convince a bank that he could handle a one point two billion dollar purchase, boy, oh boy! Hmm. Uh, if you if you ask me this last week, I'd tell you no, but from some of the people I've been talking to, yes, because apparently it's easier to borrow a billion dollars than to borrow a million dollars. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Why would that be? And it's because no, it you know. You're borrowing it, but they actually own it. And um, you know, when when Cigars International was sold, was it was that type of thing that ended up happening. That this venture capital company is really the owner of right. it, and you're running it, and you get a big chunk, you get a piece of it or whatever. But it's never anybody's. Like who who is Imperial Tobacco? Who is the guy that owns it? There isn't. There is no such person. So it's a whole bunch of people that's involved at that point. But can we'll get into can collaborations happen or all that stuff, but we're not going to get to all of it. So the after show recorded immediately following is a podcast only. So if you're on YouTube watching the show, you got to subscribe to the Cigar Authority on a podcast. Find any podcast catcher, get it. And um, the show is on Wednesday. Uh, automatically, and you'll you'll get it. Just subscribe to it, and you'll you'll get it. Um, for the YouTube listeners or just the podcast listeners, subscribe to YouTube also because we're gonna uh, work on some uh, treats that only the YouTube get us because we're taking something away from them. So let's do something for both of them. Um, all right, I want to get to uh, the asylum because Barry said uh, Jonathan's was terrible. Yeah, all I remember is cockroaches. Don't yeah. remember a punchline. Don't remember anything. Well, Ed Sullivan, perhaps you can refresh his memory. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was so that. funny. I laughed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. It's time for a peek in the asylum with our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum cigars. He sang some iconic songs that have used sound bites of Phil Rizzuto providing play-by-play as he tried to score. But now Meatloaf has shed some light on the song, I'll Do Anything for Love. In the song he sang, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. What is that, you ask? Hmm. According to Meatloaf in a recent interview, 
He was with a very nice lady back then, but things got a little bit boring in the bedroom, and she started walking around the apartment wearing nothing but a strap on. Mr. Loaf went on to add, it was his horror to <laughs> be <Loaf>. propositioned <laughs> in such a manner that he drew inspiration on the meaning of love and how far one would go for it, which in this case, he wouldn't do that. However, the real question is, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> and that's not only insane, it's a Cylon. And that's how to do it. <laughs> And that's how it's done, Mr. John. Mr. Loaf. That was, pretty, <laughs> that was the best. That made it sound like it was a legit news story. <laughs> In a recent interview, Mr. Loaf was quoted. I'd like that to be Barry's new nickname, <laughs> Mr. Loaf. So he must you have think a his re- grandmother like pinched him on the cheek? She's pinching a loaf? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Nobody ever – he must have a real name, right? Yeah. In the story, his real name was there. Yeah. But- I Nobody didn't write it ever down and used it. Meatloaf. What was he thinking? But it sticks, and you know mm-hmm. exactly what we're talking about. Crazy. Uh, so, all right. So back to the the big news, which is um, the Altadas uh, sell off. So we haven't taken Perdomo off the table. Nobody's off the table now. Not and, nobody. Patina's not buying them. No, they're not. No, they're not. Between uh, ramen noodle courses. So I wrote down what I had thought. Now this is the day this happened. I start writing all kinds of notes down of. What, what I could think because we're going to be talking about it. And uh, I put down five thoughts that I had. Now I can go into many more thoughts. But my first five thoughts were Davidoff, which is a global brand, and they get their cigarettes back that they lost the distribution of that. I thought that was a crazy move for them because somebody controlled something with their name on it. They also get Davidoff Cubans back. Because they had a Cuban cigar, and now they could because they'd be handling uh, the sure. distribution of all Cuban cigars, and that connection would, would do it. <coughs> My problem is, financially, I think they're not in a position right now as, as a company. I don't think things are all that great. I think it would make more sense if they broke it up and they just made the play for the Habanos part because of the financial yep. issue. I don't think as a whole they could buy it as a whole. Yeah, and I don't think they could handle all those other brands, or not the way they are now anyway. Mm-hmm. Then you got Jay Cortez. Jay Cortez is the company that owns Oliva Cigars. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at it as a small brand and everything, but the company itself is gigantic, European monster. Uh, but a small U.S. footprint, all of a sudden they become the biggest U.S. footprint if they did that. Um, General Cigar. They are owned by Swedish Match. The problem with that is they're, they're number two. So can number two buy number one? And it's not considered a monopoly at that point. You'll have lots of... How is it a monopoly? Because you've got all the other brands floating around. It's not a monopoly. It, it, I, I think when it comes to the size of that company at that point, it's going to be too big of a percentage. Well, people could make the argument that way. Maybe they don't make the argument. Listen, they're not, they're not fighting the under over 21 thing. Right. So uh, maybe they don't fight it. This industry drives me crazy. Um, Japan Tobacco, um, you have um, also with the General Cigar thing, they would completely control Japan the Tobacco that uh, sets up at the IPCPR every year and you can't buy the cigars? Correct. That's China Nor tobacco, do they have samples? That's, that's, oh, that's, that's China. I'm sorry. Which is another good choice, too. That, that's not on here. play for China Tobacco. They've been trying to get into the cigar industry forever. Yeah. They've been at the trade show every year. Can't do anything with them. Correct. But it now gets them in the global market. But it would be such a mistake for them if the same thing would happen. They would say, because they're big into the electronic stuff, they're big into the cigarette stuff, they'd come in and say, what, well, you got to hang on to this tobacco for years and years before, and then three years after that, and then you got to age it, and where's the money come I, in? I mean, look how many cigar companies right now are having their boxes made in China. Right. You know, so they already have the box making capabilities over there, and, you know, it gives them something they've wanted to get into for yeah. a long time. So China, And Japan, they have the money. Well, then you have the U.S. leader in cigars, um, not premium, but in the domestic side, which is Swisher. Well, they own Drew Estate that... Uh, which is teeny in comparison to, to uh, Altadis, right. but they're big. That gives Now them, they'll be the biggest. Doesn't that give them the access to the end consumer through yep. JR, which through is online, something that you had said it's a great buy. each one of the groups that yep. ends up being at the end yep. needs it's, to have it. I'd hate to see it, but it'd that's be, the one that makes be, sense. It'd be a great buy. I'd hate to see it, but then again, they have a serious. They're a U.S. company. They could not take 
the Habano steel. Right. So it would have to be broken up. Yeah. It would have to be broken up, and, it, and then it's there. And what about Villiger as an option? They're a giant. I think Jay Cortez is a bit a uh, better European play than Villiger, in my, my opinion. Yeah. Villiger doesn't know how to run the premium cigar industry. Well, they haven't been successful at creating new brands to launch in the U.S. market, but these are existing brands. They're buying monsters. They can't even keep the sales staff. How many times they flipped the sales staff around? They fired them on, on the road. Yeah, but before Christmas, their president switched over. It, I think they're out. I think they're out of the cigar industry, the premium cigar industry. That that press release this week was like the next step. You're not going to the trade show. It's over. Yeah, and what, TP, they can focus a guess. more on the What cigarettes. if they're not going to the trade they're show? They're going to get their cigars and they're going to give it to that wholesale company that owns that trade show. Yep. Phillips and King. Yep. They end up saying, here, you take them all. You do the distribution and, and all of that. And we're yeah. out. Yep. And we just we just do a brand that you guys carry. What if they did that because they're going to the trade show because they're buying the other company? Why be there twice? Be- because they wouldn't say, we're not going to the trade show, and now we are going to the trade show. We're now Altadis. This, this ain't going to happen that fast. And don't forget, Renee has strong ties to Phillips and King from when he worked with yeah. Aurora. They're going to Phillips and yeah. King. Is is a guess, you know? It's too early for us with the conspiracy theories, but there's there's a heads up on one right there yeah. that Villager goes to to them. Um, so uh, I do think it's going to get sold in pieces. I don't think there's anybody crazy enough to say, "Let me take it all." And if they did take it all, it would be to take it all as a package and then sell it off piece by piece mm-hmm. at that point. But why would they bother buying something to, to sell it? Right what away? What about the legal liability of owning those brands where Trump is allowing people that, that own something that got taken away. Well, that's going to be a big problem, too. Yeah, we saw the first lawsuit with that this week. The people that their parents owned the piers where the cruise ships docked sued Carnival for the use of their properties that their family once owned. Mm-hmm. So that was the first lawsuit. Can you can you imagine it? Altadis goes, somebody else buys... Habanos, and then there's a company in the U.S. using the word Monte Cristo and Romeo and Juliet, and somebody in the rest of the world that owns it everywhere else but here, and they could certainly open up. Well, you can't because you can't, you can't make a new brand now, but that's their rightful ownership. But wouldn't somebody owning it's, those? It's their rightful ownership, actually, as it as it stands now. But then you could end up getting the Menendez family to say that's ours to begin with. But what about, you don't even have the right to sell that. What about just doing a simple name change, and now you've got a predicate dated product? Yes, so they could change the name of Monte Cristo to Monte, which they did. They could change Romeo and Juliet to Romeo, which they already did, and then say, okay, th- this is it. Now, could there be an argument that the Monte Cristo people say, Monte, Monte Cristo, but it doesn't look like it anymore. They've made the changes. This, this has all been in the works for a while. These changes have been there for, for a while happening. And that's my crazy conspiracy thing. When I see these changes, why are they changing that? Why would you take Monte Cristo and, and call it Monty? What reason would they, there was a reason, underlying reason behind those moves that they made? Uh, so let's look at um, the different elements and who would be rightful for those elements? Well, we're running we're running low on time. Oh. You may have to push that right. into the after show. All right. So in the after show, we'll we'll look at each element and who should buy each element and what it's what it's worth. We'll get to that. Right now, it's time for the Don Raphael offer of the day, brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? If so, for how much? And I'm told that um, I shouldn't uh, not sleep because I'll die after seven months to six years. It's a real thing. A slow, painful death. Yeah. Hmm. So that's it. I'm I won't okay do it. it. But for $50, <laughs> can I run over your toes on one foot with a car? What kind of car are we talking? Like uh, yours. 57 Chevy? No, or... your, little ba- your little girly car that oh, you drive. The go-kart. Car. My little girly car <laughs> weighs a lot more than it looks like it does. <laughs> but I think I'd be willing to deal with it for 50 bucks. I feel like I could push your car over. You're welcome to try, but I'm, I'm willing you can to barely d- walk up the stairs. <laughs> I'm willing to drive it and give you the fifty dollars if I can run your toes over. I'm willing to film it. I think I'd be in on that one. 
I mean, what what damage could possibly be done? Well, you, you got you got Aaron from the Astros googling it to see how many bones <laughs> you can possibly break in the to- in your toes. But I, I don't think you. I think it's fine to get your foot run over. But I, I, hang on, he didn't say your out. foot. He said your toes. But it's a big difference. You get bones on the top of your foot; those will break. But the pressure runs up. I think you can wind up breaking a leg out of it. What? <laughs> He's you? not spinning the tires. <laughs> I'm just oh, going to run them over. It's like a pressure no. thing. Get the hell out one, of here. One second. Boom. Run right over it. 50 bucks. We'll film it. You get the $50. I we get could, to drive. We could film it. I don't know that I feel comfortable with Monday. you driving my car. Do you know how to drive a stick? Yeah. Yeah. I saw you in the uh, DeLorean. It was not pretty. It's not pretty, but, but I can do it. Yeah, I don't want that going over my foot. Some pick, you need to pick practice. whoever you want. Pick whoever you want driving over it. Barry. Let's put Barry in the front seat. Now, That's an unfair the, advantage. Now the car weighs a little bit more. Yes. Well, unless I go on the passenger side, uh-huh. in which case it would weigh <laughs> considerably right less. Ah. Oh. No, you You'll consider this? Barry, are you going to do it? No. Ed? No. No. Jonathan is going to consider it, and we will film this. And this would be a beautiful thing for the YouTube yeah, people would. only that subscribe mm. us to the YouTube show. Yeah, so having huh? your toes do it for the over show. can lead to ankle trauma. Yeah, if he spins the tires. This is I why won't. I get nervous with him driving. Right, you Google all you want, and we'll, we'll film it this week. Or he week. ends up hitting me. We'll film film it this week, which will be a great, great thing to do. Uh, La, Car- La Carême? La Carême? Mm-hmm. It sounds yes. to me like it should be creamy, but it's not creamy. It's not. No, it's on the, it's on the charred side of the flavor notes, the darker, earthier... I was expecting more sweetness, too. Right, but it's mm. not a strong cigar. No, it's Even not. with the char, usually you, you associate that with a stronger cigar. Yeah, a milder side of medium. Yep. Yeah. A little bit of a leathery finish. Leather? Yeah, it does resemble ball gag. I'm with you. A little leathery. That's for ball gag. I just <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right. It's interesting. Remember that little bit of Pennsylvania that was in the patina? Good to be a little of that taste? A little taste of Pennsylvania in here? I enjoy the patina more. I'm going to go there. I'm going to say it. Whoa. Yeah. You don't have to go there, man. <laughs> All right. This are we is, doing a classic three-way or what? All right. Let's do it. Classic three-way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. <laughs> But now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the Classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the Classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. I think it should be sudden death. Nobody's the winner? No, you just you ask a question. Whoever gets the first question right, boom. And if it's a tie, we go to the next one. And boom. Just saying. You want to do it that way? No. All right. <laughs> so we won't. Chicken. I have five questions and three tie breaks. Of course. It's got to be the longest freaking one because I got some place to go after this. Who's the champion? I am. All right. So we'll go to you first. Audrey Hepburn. Is a British actress. Breakfast at Tiffany's, My Fair Lady, born in Brussels, Belgium today. What year? 1903. 03. Damn it. 1901. 01. 07. 07 for the point. It was 29. See, you would have taken it if if this was sudden death. Would have, could have, should have. To you, Mr. Jonathan. Harry Fujiwara, a.k.a. Mr. Fuji. Ah, the wrestler. American professional wrestler born in Honolulu, Hawaii. He was a Hawaiian. He wasn't even Chinese guy. Mr. Fuji, born today what year? Japanese. Japanese, whatever. Oriental. And he was born in. <laughs> am, am I? I don't think I can say that either. No, you anymore. can't. You can't. Say Asian. That. 
that might be acceptable All right. for another couple it's days. It's so bad. With all the people don't even have 49. 25. 25. And I had 1927. 27 for the point. It's 37. Yeah, Dave. With Oriental, it can refer to things, but not people. All right. So you can have an Oriental. So rub. I don't mean anything bad from this. I'm just ignorant. Someone of, can be from the Orient. Accepted. It should be a booklet or something for us people. What is acceptable? Because we, we don't mean Nothing. bad by it. Nothing is you, acceptable You don't know what anymore. to say anymore. All right, Barry. The American Academy of Arts. The American Academy of Arts and Science was founded in Boston, Massachusetts. Today, what year? 1898. 1898. 1863. 1863. I have 1863 written down. Yeah. Wow, 1863. That's amazing. Everybody is way over. Wow. It's 1780 by John and Samuel Adams. Oh, yeah. They were the founding members of it. They so make the beer. No. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just the Samuel Adams does. I see. Two, three. Over to um, Ed Sullivan. Construction begins by the United States on the Panama Canal today. What year? Wow. I listened to a whole podcast about that, and I have no idea. Wow. Um, 1913. 1919. Wow, I had 49. 1949. Everybody is over. It's 1904. Wow, one question left, and then we got to go to tiebreakers. Barry's got one point, Ed's got one point, Mr. Jonathan's got nothing. Charles Rolls meets Frederick Royce in the Midland Hotel in Manchester, England today, later on forming Rolls Royce Company. But here's when they met today. What year? Uh, 1850. 1850. 1917. 1917. 1901. 1901 for the point and win Ed Sullivan. It's 1904. Huh? Well, See that, I, Barry? This is what happens when you don't listen to me. You I, become a loser. I would have been with an asterisk if I won that way. Huh? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Um, the after show recorded immediately following. We're going to get more of this with the uh, acquisition um, because I broke it down to uh, who should buy each segment of this, uh, who should and who will. Oh. Huh? Who should and who should who will. Um, but final thoughts here on the luck. Karem, La Karem. Uh, I think Ed Sullivan nailed it when he said it's quite a bit milder than what you would expect by looking at this cigar. I put it down, I pick it back up mm. after that, and it's still lit. It gets like it, ten extra points. Just it's got that. a good, uh, it's got a good flavor. You've got to get past the just aesthetic portion of it because there is no aesthetics. <laughs> it's ugly, but it tastes good. Part of it is the the bright white band on it showcasing the rough wrapper. <laughs> You think if they put an ugly band? Not an ugly band, but if it was a dark <laughs> band, I don't think your eye would go right for the... Um, right. What do you call that? The bumps on it? It's... Um, toothy? Toothy. Very toothy. The thing that you said about this very cigar an hour ago? Yeah. Just checking. But you I know, think- when we do reviews for Cigar Journal, one of the one of the questions on the form is one-dimensional to multi-dimensional. There's not enough dimension to this cigar for me. Which is Why very, are you going negative? It's just very, <laughs> it's just, just straightforward earth to me. No, I'm kind of with him. I mean, it it doesn't have a lot going on. It's not like wow. I'm multiple good. changes. It's not bad. I'm good just, with it. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. It's good. Yeah. All right, that's it. <coughs> Next week, why are cigars good for you? <coughs> with all this choking and coughing, you'd think uh, it's bad for you, but it's not. I accidentally inhaled. But um, I'm actually so sick and tired of legislators claiming everybody knows smoking is bad for you. We're going to disagree and tell you why we think it's good for you. So until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.